Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for December 22nd, 2010, and now the news. Cerberus pretty much lost its shirt when its founder Steven Feinberg bought Chrysler from Daimler. But now Bloomberg reports the investment company is going to recoup close to 90% of that investment by selling Chrysler's finance arm. In fact, a lot of analysts said at the time that the finance arm is the real reason why Cerberus bought Chrysler. It paid $7.4 billion for the automaker in 2007. It will sell the finance arm in a deal worth about $7.1 billion. At the time, Feinberg said he was trying to save an American icon and preserve jobs for the working man. But all Cerberus did was slash new product development, cheapen up the interiors, and drive Chrysler into the ground. When billionaire investor Warren Buffett bought a chunk of Chinese automaker BYD, it made headlines around the world. Buffett paid $84 a share, that's Hong Kong dollars, but today those shares are down to $42. In other words, the $230 million he poured into BYD is now worth $115 million. Yet Reuters quotes Buffett as saying he's still confident he'll ultimately turn a profit because of BYD's technology in electric cars and buses. But you know, sounds like a variation of an old joke. How do you make a small fortune in the auto industry? Start with a big fortune. Honda successfully completed the first flight test of its small business airplane called the Honda Jet. Conducted at North Carolina's Piedmont Triad International Airport, the Honda Jet remained in the air for 51 minutes while its flight characteristics and performance were analyzed and systems were checked. This was the first step for the company to receive certification from the Federal Aviation Administration. Honda must complete more tests before the jet is cleared for takeoff and has a total of five planes to get that certification. Honda plans to start building the Honda Jet in mass production in 2012 at a yet to be finished facility in Greensboro, North Carolina, and already has 100 orders for the plane. What's it cost? A mere $4.5 million. Earlier in the week, we reported that Volkswagen wants to be number one in China in electric vehicles as part of its effort to become the number one automaker in the world, surpassing Toyota. And now the company will expand in Malaysia to help reach its goal. According to Bloomberg, VW will start building Passats in the country next year. Malaysian automaker and distributor DRB Hicom will assemble the vehicles, which already does assembly for Mercedes-Benz and Honda. There's some good news to report on the safety front. The number of vehicles awarded top honors by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety more than doubled for 2011. 66 vehicles have received the top pick accolade compared to just 27 for the 2010 model year. The list includes 40 cars, 25 SUVs, and one minivan. Volkswagen, as well as Hyundai Kia, received the most accolades at nine apiece. GM, Ford, and Toyota each had eight winners. Of course, the safety advocacy group is quick to point out that last year, traffic fatalities in the U.S. were the lowest since 1950. But I'd add, this is all fine and dandy, but it comes at a price. Meeting the new roof crush standards is making A-pillars and the blind spots that they cause huge. Plus, the jaws of life are having trouble cutting through the high-strength steels that automakers are using to meet those roof standards. You know, it's good to know, hot rodding is still alive. Trainees at the Mercedes-Benz plant in Rastatt, Germany, have assembled a one-off B-Class. This popular European hatchback is usually known as an efficient family car, but apparently there's enough room under the hood to have some fun. Following that age-old recipe, the trainees dropped in a big honking engine and the B55, as it's called, was born. Amazingly, a 5.5 liter V8 fit between the front fenders, but the students had to get creative when it came to routing the exhaust and steering system. Now, normally the B-Class is a front drive car, but that was not an option here. 
The engine's 388 horsepower are routed to the back wheels through an old E-Class rear end. It also received upgraded brakes as part of the transformation. Overall, this high-performance hatchback looks like a regular B-Class, which was the team's goal from the start. Although no formal tests have been done, it's estimated the B-55 can sprint from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in less than 6 seconds. Coming up next, let's take a look at how Lotus is making a comeback and doing it in a big way. At the LA Auto Show a month back, we got a chance to catch up with the folks at Lotus. If you watched or listened to our podcast at the show, you know that we interviewed the new CEO of Lotus, Danny Bahar. But correspondent Isaac Bouchard also got a chance to talk to the top technical and design guys at Lotus and learn how they're coming out with so many cars all at once. Let's go to that right now. One of the biggest stories out of this year's LA Auto Show is the rebirth of Lotus, the 58-year-old English sports car manufacturer and creator of some of the most successful and inventive race cars in history. They're here with five all-new models that'll be hitting the road over the next several years. It was a, a very short uh, time to develop all those cars, but uh, when you start from scratch, uh, having to design a complete new range uh, it is uh, also a great opportunity to understand very well what is the perfect positioning of each, each car and the articulation between them. The design of these new Lotuses speaks for itself, but it's their engineering that will determine the future of the company. Of course, if you look to these different cars, it's like that that we want to do a, a commonality between these cars. So we will use in each car, more or less, except of course the Elise, the same powertrain, so the powertrain means that we have the uh, same engine, same gearbox, the front mid-engine cars will have of course a torque tube in between. Uh, we will use the same electronic platforms and uh, suspension works, so of course they have a different body style and they have a different, uh, let me say, uh, a purpose, of course the Esprit is a different car like uh, an Elite, but from the, from the technical side these cars are really the same. Uh, uh, out of out of all these technical terms, you know, and uh, what we do is of course a different interpretation of the of the powertrain and of these uh, let me say hybrid stuff that we can run each car for for its purpose and for its uh, 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 usage. Why did Lotus make such a big splash? Two reasons. First, statement of intent: we're back. Second, to show five new cars in context, not only to their competitors but within the lineup itself. From the LA Auto Show, I'm Isaac Bouchard for AutoLine Daily. It is mind-blowing that Lotus will come out with five new cars. You know, when I went over to the Lotus display, I ran into Jaguar's top designer, Ian Callum, who was shaking his head in wonder at five new models. He told me, I don't know how they'll do it. Well, we'll know if Lotus can pull it off in the not-too-distant future. Hey, don't forget to tune into AutoLine After Hours tomorrow night. We're going to be handing out presents for the best automotive happenings in 2010 and lumps of coal for the worst. You got any suggestions? We'd love to hear them. Just email them to viewermail at autolinedetroit.tv. And that brings us to the end of today's report on the top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.